Good afternoon, everybody, and thanks for attending the How to Sell Electrical. Uh, we'll just get started right away. As first, I want to thank everyone for attending and let you guys know that today's webinar is sponsored by NRHA, Harder Retailing, and the Vendor Partner Program. Today's panelist is Nate Albert. He's the manager at Kinko Ace Hardware in Lockport, Illinois. Uh, he has a pretty exceptional electrical department. He's had a lot of luck with CFL bulbs, energy efficient products, and other things like that. He caters to a lot of DIY customers along with contractors. Uh, first, before we get into Nate, first I want to talk a little bit about electrical sales and what's been going on in the category. Last year we did a what does today's store look like research, and we had about 3,000 retailers get back to us about everything that's happening in their stores. And as you can see, uh, we c compared from 1996 polls to 2009. And over 13 years, you can see that the percent of sales for the electrical department has gone up, while the percent of sales floor has actually gone down to retailers are making more with less room. And on this next slide, we have the sales to inventory uh, ratio. As you can see, growth margin is going up, along with the productivity indexes. And now, Nate, we'll get right on to you. Uh, can you could kind of introduce yourself to all of the attendees and tell us a little bit about your electrical department? Yeah, good afternoon, hey, good afternoon everybody. everybody. My name is uh, Nate Albert. Uh, like Caitlin said, I am the Clark Griswold on the cover of this uh, month's National Retailing Magazine with the two extension cords being plugged together. <laughs> I've worked for Ace for about 11 years and uh, been the manager of this store for about two and a half. Um, like she said, we have a pretty... Uh, Pretty large uh, electrical department. Uh, it uh, has everything from uh, you know, contractor stuff to do-it-yourselfers, um, and we've we've discussed in the past uh, about CFLs and and our big push with with not only ACE uh, but with ComEd here in the state of Illinois and and their Smart Ideas program. We were able to uh, uh, sell some uh, CFLs at a reasonable price. Okay, Nate, could you tell us how you promote your electrical department? and maybe some of the sales or different promotions you use? Well, you know, just like uh, most retailers, we have the, uh, the national ads that go out. Um, we, uh, excuse me, I'm getting over a cold, so please excuse me if I cough or sneeze on the uh, phone here. But uh, nothing too uh, too extraordinary, but, we, you know, we just try to keep things looking fresh. We move things around. Uh, we... Uh, Always keep uh, people looking uh, for the for the new items, uh, end caps and stuff like that. Um, always clip strips and add-on sales uh, right in people's faces so they know what we got. Okay, uh, can you tell us a little bit about the red hot buys that you've been using to kind of advertise? I know that's an ACE promotion, but uh, you mentioned kind of CFLs and maybe kind of the outdoor lighting. Yeah, the uh, red hot buys is a, is a ACE promotion that uh, goes is a item that's on sale all month long um, from start to finish. Um, in, in the months past, they've had the uh, uh, CFL bulbs, the four different varieties of CFL bulbs, uh, for $0.99. Cents. Uh, we, we continued that through, through in our company, uh, our seven stores, uh, for like the last six months. So we've really seen, I just talked to one of my buyers, and he said that we've sold over 30,000 CFL bulbs at the, the $0.99 cent price. Wow. Um, as far as uh, uh, indoor, some of the indoor lighting fixtures, there's also a uh, promotion that uh, ComEd Smart Ideas program ran with uh, some indoor CFL fixtures, which we also uh, were able to receive fairly, uh, fairly, uh, fairly low cost, and we've been selling well on those also. Okay. I guess on to the next, Nate. Uh, what's your store's approach to employee training, especially for the electrical department? What kind of different scenarios do you use? Well, like everything, uh, electrical is is, a, is an area of the store where you really want to make sure that you have uh, good employee training. Um, like we had spoken in the past, Caitlin, that customers are the do-it-yourselfer is scared of electrical, so you want to make sure that you have the employee helping them that's that's confident in what they're doing. Um, ACE offers a lot of uh, uh, training things in electrical. There's a lot of stuff online that can be taken, just uh, hands-on type stuff that, that needs to be done. That's just the main thing is make sure that they're well-trained before they are assisting customers in electrical. Okay, what do you think is more important, the online training or the hands-on for electrical? Well, I think they're both very valuable. Definitely the hands-on, I would say, is, is more 
is more uh, more important. Good. How often do you do training? Just whenever a new employee comes in, or is it periodical? Oh, it'll be periodical uh, uh, checkups on the employees that I've worked with for for years. We still go over things. Uh, you know, new questions arise all the time, but uh, we just do a lot of refreshers. But when it comes to new employees, there's a there's a nice scheduled program that they'll training program that they will do. Nate, this is Dan again here. I, I had a question specifically about training. Electrical, much like much like plumbing, is one of those areas where where building codes and and all those sort of things come into play. How how do you how do you go about walking the fine line of being able to give advice to customers, but not giving them advice that would somehow make your store or, or put your employees in some sort of liability position? That's a good question, Dan. Uh, we we do the we'll do the basics. We'll talk customers. We'll tell them their options. Um, when it comes down to specifics on you know how much flexible conduit you can run, how much Romex you can run, uh, we tell them to make sure that they they contact the uh, local municipality on the build, on the electrical codes. We do the same thing in plumbing. Okay, uh, Nate. I was going to ask you. I know you have uh, kind of a split of DIY customers versus contractors. And how do you and your employees know how to handle the two different customers in the electrical department? Uh, well, you know, like a lot of the contractors are, are basically looking for the quantities, so they, they don't necessarily need uh, assistance with, uh, you know, what they're purchasing, but they want to make sure that we have uh, what they need. So we just tell the, the, the employees to tell the contractors that there's more available in the back. we got spools of wire. we got uh, boxes of electrical, uh, of uh, receptacles and switches, so... Whatever you need, we we got. Um, as far as the uh, you know do-it-yourselfer, that's that's like I said, they spend as much time with them as as possible in the aisle, make sure they're getting what they need. Is there any telltale signs that you let your employees know about of how to identify a contractor versus a DIYer? Oh, they they the ones that have been here for a while, they they can pretty much tell. You know, when you walk past them and and, and ask them, oh, what can I help you find today? And they say. Oh, nothing. I'm in here all the time. We know what we need. <laughs> There's your contractor. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think the different keys are, are Nate, to, to, to making your contractors happy from a service standpoint? Do you guys do any job site work or have any kind of outside sales force? We, we don't. We do have, uh, 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 you know, some regular customers that we know are, are good at the, uh, the work they do as far as we, we, we've we have a relationship through the, like, the local chamber of commerce. We know that they're good electricians, so we will uh, we will refer to them if uh, if they're looking for more work. Um, yeah. <laughs> do, do you offer anything in the way of installed services for your consumer customers? We don't. Um, Ace had, had had done it for for a while, but we kind of got away from that uh, just because of the the liability issues. Um, but I know that they're still working on, on, on trying to work something out. That's that's where you kind of get into a fine line of uh, of what's right, what's what's up to code, what's what's not. Uh, it's it's touchy right now, but I, I'm hoping that that will change in the future here. But I know you did me mention that you offer uh, the Ace Rewards program for all of your contractor work. Oh, definitely, yeah. And uh, uh, as far as uh, house house account type issues, they they. They receive a, a percentage off of their transactions, you know, if they pay their bill on time and stuff like that. So, Has um, that been a pretty big incentive to keep them as a repeat customer? Oh, yeah, most definitely, yep. I guess on to the next question, I was going to ask you, how do you, I guess overall, how do you differentiate your store from the competition? What do you guys do differently? Well, obviously convenience is one thing. Um, in and out, uh, there is an associate to help you at all times. Um we, I, I'm not sure all the competition will sell certain things by the foot, uh, stuff like that, or, you know, on an individual basis, you know, like light switch screws, which is a, a, a switch cover screws are actually a big thing, and we sell those individually. So um, I, I think that's kind of what makes us stand out a little more than the competition. Do you have a lot of competition in the area, especially for the electrical department? Uh, right in the general vicinity, no. We go to go a few miles out, and there's a, um, Home Depot and, a, and Menard stores. Okay. What about electrical supply stores? Uh, nothing right in this uh, general vicinity, no. The ne nearest one is probably uh, 
really a good uh, six, seven, eight, maybe even eight miles away. Yeah, and they have limited hours too. So. Okay, I know you talked a little bit about CFLs earlier in the presentation, but I was going to ask you what products have been selling well in the electrical department, and if you've noticed any new trends or any kind of hot products. Um, besides CFLs. Yeah. Ah, oh, let's see. Um, well, and I guess, you mentioned I, I, earlier that the LED lighting was starting to maybe catch on, but price points are still a little high. Yeah, yeah. Uh, LED lighting, I've seen an I've seen an increase with it. Uh, it's not taking off nearly as much as the CFLs, but it is really, it is starting to pick up. But yeah, like we like you said, the price point is still still a little high for most consumers. But I tell you, what has actually increased are the LED flashlights. That seems to be a really big one. Those costs have come down quite a bit, and uh, people are really are taking an interest in those. You don't have to worry about replacing the the, ba uh, the bulbs and, and don't have to replace the batteries as much. And I see okay. that mag mag lights have, have gone to LED, so that's uh, that's that's good. <laughs> <laughs> what about the topic of, uh, and this kind of leads to the next question here, but but uh, the whole green movement, obviously CFLs, LEDs, um, uh, thermostat, programmable thermostats, light timers, that kind of stuff. What, what do you see happening in those areas, and how are you guys kind of capitalizing on that? Um, you know, I, at first I was, uh, I was a little hesitant on the whole going green and everything like that, uh, at myself at home. Um, but when I when I switched over some of the to some of the green things in my in my house, I've seen some savings. You know, I did switch out my bulbs to the CFLs, and I've I've seen the savings on my electric bill. Um, and I'm sorry, Dan, if I didn't hear the second part of your question, somebody was talking in my ear. <laughs> no, I'm sorry about that. Um, uh, my question was, you know, also in areas like programmable uh, lighting uh, switches or programmable thermostats that sort of thing um do you do anything differently or are you are you seeing that, that, that more consumers are coming in interested in those kind of things and if so are you promoting them differently or anything like that yeah there's definitely been an increase in, in all those things that you've mentioned um and i i think that ace ace uh, overall is on board with with really promoting some of these green green items um you know we we're offering things like recycling of paint uh Recycling of batteries, which we've done for a long time. Recycling of thermostats. I mean, it's it's really people are starting to really uh, really care and really go green. I mean, there's even a charge to re a slight charge to recycle the paint, and we've seen people bring in 25 gallons of wow. of used paint to recycle. It's 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 good. It's very impressive to see that people are really starting to think this way. We, or, or this might be a good time to jump in with a couple of the questions we're getting from the from the audience out there. One is uh, um, uh, a question in regard to recycling of CFL bulbs. Do you guys do any of that for, through your store, or do you provide provide your customers with any kind of resource that'll help them recycle those CFL bulbs that that, that contain some mercury in them? Yeah, it's uh, it's interesting that you asked that because I actually got a phone call from some. Uh, some lady in New York this morning that was asking about the big picture that's in the uh, uh, the magazine re regarding the Ace CFL Recycling Center, the box that we have sitting on the floor. Um, the name of the company that we go through, that Ace has gone through, is uh, I, I believe it's Viola, and you know, if I pronounce that wrong. Please don't uh, be upset, but. Uh, yeah, it, it's a it's one of those things that just ships through FedEx, and uh, they you know we send them a full box, they send us an empty box, and we just continue. Ace has been promoting the the availability of recycling bulbs now for for months, maybe even close to a year. Uh, Nate, didn't you do something uh, with your recycling center with the bulbs that you had some kind of special where if they brought in a bulb to recycle, they got a discounted price or a CFL for free? Is that correct? Yeah, that is correct. The uh, uh, Chicagoland. Uh, group of ace stores has a separate advertising than the national ads and we had a promotion in there where if they brought in an old bulb we would give them a, a new cfl bulb it was a very successful promotion and it let people know uh, of course everybody likes to get something for free but uh the, the it also meant you know it also showed that we are here to recycle them mm -hmm. 
Um, another question here that, that, that's coming from the attendees, uh, Nate, is what do you find, you talked a little bit before about uh, employee training, and you said uh, hands-on training was, was certainly one of the methods you use. What, what do you find to be the best ways to deliver hands-on training, and do you use any sort of outside resources to come in and talk to your employees about that kind of, those kind of training initiatives? Um, there is a, uh, uh, a couple of actual actual gentlemen that are, are very big with. Uh, uh, I wish I could think of his name now, but uh, he's does a lot of training for Ace, and he he offers training throughout the country, basically for for electrical and plumbing, where you're you're doing everything. You're stripping wires, you're putting together outlets, you're uh, you know, stripping Romex. He, he shows you everything you need to know. Um, I'm sorry. I guess I don't have enough information on that, but but you do know. bring in so, someone from the outside oh, yeah. to kind of give seminars definitely. on the story. Yeah, okay. Yeah, I mean, unless you have somebody that's that's uh, comfortable enough to train people, and everything, every small thing is is helpful to you know a, a high school associate or something like that. Oh, absolutely. Uh, Nate, I know you mentioned uh, the 99 cent CFL bulb sale. I was wondering if uh, you had any problems keeping up the margins with that sale, or um, how did that work? I know they're usually three to four dollars each. Yeah, there's uh, this this smart ideas program that, that we've worked with 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 Comet and and GE um, do offer the bulbs at a reasonable cost to us, so we were able to still make margin at uh, at 99 cents. Now the giving away part, yeah, that was uh, <laughs> that was quite a lower margin that day, but. Uh, it still was a good uh, overall overall sale. Do you think that helped kind of send the message that you guys are the place for the energy efficient electrical products? Most definitely, yep. I have another question here in terms of uh, much like plumbing, which we did a we did a webinar yesterday about how to sell plumbing. Um, electrical kind of walks the line between uh, fashion, the fashion side and the the rougher side, the rough end side, if you will. And, and and the question kind of stems from the idea of how do you promote kind of those fashion end products, the ceiling fans, the lighting fixtures? Do you do a lot of special order? Do you try and display a lot of the products? And then how do you manage to be price competitive with those products and still maintain margins throughout the uh, throughout the department? Uh, that's a good question, Dan. I'm going to be completely honest with you: is that uh, our store is not uh, because of size. Um, hasn't really gotten into the fashion aspect of electrical. Um, there is a special order uh, book for ceiling fans available, um, and as far as light, uh, and also for lighting fixtures. But because of the space that I have, we don't really get into too much of the the, the fashion uh, lighting. Well, what about the managing of the prices? Obviously, there's price and pop, you know, whether something highly price sensitive like a light bulb. Are you, are you doing pretty aggressive variable pricing with your blind items in the electrical department to try and make up some of those margins on the uh, competitive items? Oh, yeah, there's uh, that pricing structure in, in place where, uh, yeah, there's there's definitely some things with higher margin that uh, make up for it, yes. Okay, I guess overall, Nate, I was going to ask you, what is your secret to success in the electrical department? What do you think are some of the most important things retailers need to keep in mind to stay successful like you've been? Um, I would say uh, number one is to keep it looking fresh all the time. Uh, make sure the, the department looks full with all electrical supplies. Um, and also one of the biggest things is make sure that your CFLs are merchandised in with your incandescents. Don't leave them on an end cap or something like that. Make make sure customers are walking past those before they get to your incandescent bulbs. I think those are the two major ones. Yep. Nate, if someone came to you and said that uh, um, they were looking to expand their electrical department or try and be a little bit more competitive in the electrical department, is there anything that you could say to them? You want to make sure you don't do this. Kind of maybe things you've tried and haven't worked out. Not, that you, not to insinuate that you would ever make a mistake. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, yeah, actually, it kind of goes along with the other question as far as fashion. I mean, it's it's hard. What you think might look nice, uh, you're spending a lot of money on a lighting display or, or a ceiling fan display where it may just collect dust over the next few years. And, yeah, just, just yeah, I would say be careful when it comes to, 
comes to the, some of the fashion. It might just be a fad. <laughs> yeah, it's hard to distinguish. Okay, Nate, I wanted to thank you again for helping us out with this webinar. Now we'll uh, take any additional questions that the attendees have. Please feel free to just send a question through the Q&A section. And we'll here get we go, and, and we have a, a, another question here. Um, how far, how much have you gotten into the kind of audio, video, phone, data comm, kind of that, kind of those smart home type accessories? And, and how do you keep your stores up to date with all those kind of new accessories um, and get rid of old items? So it's really kind of two different questions. One, have you gotten very much involved in kind of the uh, AV data comm stuff? And, and secondly, how do you manage to, to keep your assortment fresh by bringing in old, uh, new items and getting rid of the dog items? Hey, that's uh, uh, I've had since I've been a manager. I've been trying to take a look at the, <clears throat> some of those items and really bring it in the things that I know that people are going to need right now. Um, but when I actually got to the store, I was surprised that we didn't have HDMI cables. We didn't have uh, RCA. We didn't even have RCA cables uh, to a certain extent. So I, I brought all those in, got rid of some of the other things that we didn't need. Um, some of the coax cable that I know we shouldn't have anymore. Um, yeah, you got to you got to stay fresh with that. And I, I I refer to my brother and ask him. He's the tech guy. I'm saying what what do we need to have here? <laughs> yeah. And there's some there's some high margin in some of that stuff. So make sure you have it on the shelf. What, what about uh, what about finding room for new items? Where 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 do you find your new items? Where do you go to look for stuff? And 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 what's the process of bringing it in? Oh, that's a tricky one. Uh, we we haven't uh, we haven't gotten those aisle stretchers in yet. We've been looking, <laughs> we've been ordering them for the last few weeks. But, yeah, yeah. It, it is tough. Um, and, and you know, when it comes down to something that you know has been sitting there for for a couple of years, just uh, mark it down. Take you know, take a loss on it if you have to, just to make make way for the new. It's a tough game, but that's a, that's a game that we're always going to have to deal with in retail. What about where you find new items? Where do you look for new items specifically for the electrical department? I'd assume you go to Ace Markets, but do you look at what, what, what other sort of resources do you use? Uh, honestly, I, my, myself, I'm always just checking out the competition. Um, I, I do uh, leave that to uh, my buyers to really to work on the different vendors and stuff like that. Um, there's always a lot of things that are available on, on, in our Ace Warehouse on AceNet. Um, they're, they're pretty up to up to the ball on that stuff. Got a comment from an attendee here, and I think it's certainly true. And uh, if you look to your uh, May issue of Hardware Retailing Magazine, we actually have a story that will be discussing this. But the comment is that, you know, many, many store owner, owners right now don't necessarily understand the technology behind the audio video category, and it's probably a, a, an under underexplored category for a lot of people. And I think that's kind of what you were saying is, when you got there, they didn't even have RCA cables stocked. And, and, and certainly today with the HDMI technology and the, and the datacom technology, it's a, it's, it, it is a lucrative category that more people are getting involved in. Yeah, I mean, they definitely uh, refer to the people that you know that is up to, uh, <laughs> up to par on technology. Uh, like I said, I refer to my brother who knows all that stuff. Great. Um, I think that uh, that clears up all the questions we have. We'll give one last opportunity for any other panelists or any other attendees to ask questions. And in the meantime, I want to take an opportunity to do a little bit more housekeeping here and, and let, uh, let folks know that if you missed any part of the webinar, if you had any technical difficulties or anything like that, or if you just came in late, that this webinar in its entirety will be available on www.nrha.org. Um, within a couple of weeks, uh, the, the recording of the webinar, including the slides and the audio, will be available. And please don't hesitate at, uh, if you have any other questions um, about the pro, uh, presentation that you didn't get answered during the presentation to send an email directly to me or at the, the last slide on here we'll have Caitlin Foley's email address as well. We did get one other question in here. Um, have you had any success with solar lighting? Yeah, I just saw that question. It actually, uh, we have, and we haven't even talked about that at all. Um, but I, I, a lot of the uh, a lot of the landscaping type uh, lighting has become huge, uh, you know, with, with the solar powered. Um, and I'm hoping that the technology has gotten better with them too, because those first few 
solar lighting that came out, you know, people people were a little dissatisfied. But I, I think they're coming a long way, and I really think that that's going to take off. Um, as far as other type of, uh, of solar lighting besides landscaping, we really haven't uh, gotten into that uh, too much. Okay, thank you, Nate. And I want to thank all the attendees and for uh, joining us with this webinar. And like Dan mentioned, if you guys have any questions that come up later on and you think up, please feel free to send me an email at kfolei at nrha.org. And I'd, uh, again, a thank you to both Caitlin and Nate for helping us out with this today. And I'd encourage all the attendees to look forward to the schedule of webinars for the remainder of the year. And please join us again for a webinar in the future. Uh, thank you again all very much. And that will conclude today's session.